This is our 2010 Jeep Wrangler JK. And this video is about doing a coolant super flush on the Jeep. Some videos out there, but I couldn't find any doing the entire super flush. So I thought I'd go ahead and make one. Day's a bit windy, so I'm um, doing the audio separately. First things first, you want to make sure that the engine is nice and cool. Go ahead and make sure it is absolutely cool. You don't want any injuries or burn yourself. Go ahead and remove the radiator cap. You can see that the coolant is a nasty brown color. Uh, Jeep has about 70,000 miles on it. Go ahead and use Xerox G05 or the dealership Chrysler recommended. Now's a good time to inspect the cap, check it. In my case, I just rubbed it down and cleaned it. Go ahead and get underneath. Uh, some people remove the grill. It depends, I suppose, if you have a stock bumper aftermarket. With our aftermarket, I could easily get up under there and see the drain plug. In the closed position, it is vertical and you'll want to turn that 180 degrees. It easily turns by hand 90 degrees uh, so that it's horizontal, uh, but then you're going to have to get some needle nose pliers or something, which you'll see in a moment, to get that turned all the way. Use the 3 8 inch hose. It's up to you what size you want to use but 3 8 inch worked pretty good for me. You can see at this point I turned the knob, the drain valve 90 degrees by hand, but I need to Go ahead and use a tool to go ahead and turn it the rest of the way. And that is counterclockwise. You can see it's pretty nasty. The whole reason of doing this in the first place is we notice that there's some s smells coming out of the heater core and it's just not working optimally again or like it used to. You'll have to excuse the uh, water sprayer here. I, I do have the soap turned off. Son was washing the, his car. But at this point, we're just putting nice tap water inside the radiator and flushing the radiator. Time to flush out the heater core. So you can see the two heater core hoses here. Uh, one on the left, one on the right. The one on the right goes to the water pump. The 
on that back side I is where I'm going to go ahead and cut it but you've got these clamps here this one you can probably use a screwdriver rather than the vice grips or the needle nose pliers that I use but just go ahead and pop it I picked up this flush and fill kit it was like three dollars no big deal Got another zip tie in the back there, so I'm just going to cut it. It's not really needed in my case. Up to you if you want to keep it. It's a double sided zip tie, so it's kind of special. So you can see on that left hose. I'm just cutting it back there by the battery, kind of keeps it away from the engine a bit. So the flushing tee, the one with the cap is the 5 8 inch one, that's the one I went ahead and used. So the intention is the left side with the T that's going to flush the heater core. The right side that goes to the water pump, we're going to use that as the drain. So we're going to remove the clamp there. And pop the hose out. Now you can just point it down up to you. For me, I used the uh, hose, that same hose to extend it down. For this part, this was just a standard quick disconnect uh, for the hoses. That's what I used just to push it on there. On that left side, the inlet that goes to the engine bay, that's going to go into the heater core. We're going to turn the water on. It's going to flush through the heater core and out the right side. Hose removed and you can see pouring out more of that junky coolant. So now we're going to flush the engine out. Go ahead and put the T back in, clamp it all down. This is just a standard yellow dot, I believe. It's a quarter inch, I'm pretty sure. Of course, with any hose clamp, you could just use a flathead screwdriver.
Go ahead and reconnect your right size hose back to the water pump. So the hose adapter is pretty simple. Black side goes to the T, which is the black T. Blue goes to the hose. So watch out because the radiator caps off in my case and once the water's on pressure builds and boom pops out go ahead and remove your hose put the cap back on the T I've used these in the past and they actually work pretty good and withstand some years. Be sure to close your radiator, drain valve, and we can go ahead and begin start filling. Now because I flush the engine with water, um, there's water still in the system, so at this point I can just go ahead and use the pure Xerox G05 fluid. And it worked out pretty good where I ended up with the near 50-50 mix. So at this point I'm going to remove and drain the overflow. Pretty simple, remove the, the hose off the radiator cap and it lifts up and kind of out. Go ahead and drain it and you see this is a five gallon bucket that I took to the chemical waste facility and had them remove and take care of properly. So just align those little slots back in drop it in. So as you're filling the coolant you have to kind of go slow and steady. It'll pour in, air bubbles will come out. You just take your time with it. At this point I'm running the engine to help kind of start flowing inside the engine. Now that we got it full, put the cap back on and I'll start to fill the overflow tank. Um, I just filled it to the minimum level of the tank. Using distilled water, go ahead and fill up the remaining to the max line.
So with the engine running, go ahead and let it get to operating temperature, run the heater full blast, help it flow through that heater core. This just allows everything to get a good mix as it runs through the engine. So go ahead and let it cool down. And we're just going to double check. Make sure the fluid level is still good inside the radiator. If you have the time, go ahead and drive a few miles around. In our case, we waited till the next day after we took it to work and now we're gonna go ahead and check the mixture level so 50-50 on the back of the Xerox should be 265 degrees Fahrenheit which in our case we ended up just a shy above that So you can see the overflow tank was used a bit. I have to use an extension here to get down in the overflow tank. We're gonna go ahead and check the mixture in there. So just as a reference, 265 is pretty much horizontal with the needle pointing, pointing 90 degrees. You can see it's a bit low. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some Xerox to it. That pretty much uses just that one bottle of Xerox and I'm good to go.